Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your boy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And uh, let's get it going. Now, this video is uh, in regards to DMX and his, uh, his medical condition. Reports are saying that DMX OD'd and is in critical care condition. Uh, some reports say he's brain dead. Now, a couple of days ago, I made a video about George Floyd and former officer Derek Chavon. Chavai Chavin, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. In that video, I touched on how both of these guys did not master or were not able to manage their dark sides. And that we all have dark sides, but we have to manage it. And when we have to tap into the dark side, it has to be rooted in righteousness. Man, this is a prime example uh, with DMX, a man that let his dark side take him over. And um, really, man, I don't, I don't even know if you call it a dark side, even though he made a lot of a few albums about darkness and a few songs about darkness. But this drug thing, man, this is uh, demonic. This is a demon that uh, this is a stronghold that can take you over and corrupt generations. And by the way, this is a cigar, not a blunt. Uh, doesn't have the ring on it. Every now and again, I like to buy cigars uh, from the locals. And a lot of times the locals don't have rings, uh, the paper wrapper around their cigars. So, um, you know, I always wonder why. They're just being cheap. Um, yeah, anyway, it's not a blunt cigar. Uh, teach his own, though. So, yes, Dilmex is a prime example of a man who allowed his dark side or his demons to take him over. In the video I made about Derek Chavane and, and, and George Floyd, I also mentioned how in life, not only those guys, but me and you also, we get slaps on the wrist from God, from the universe, karma, irony, uh, poetic justice, whatever you want to call it. We get slaps on the wrist throughout life to straighten us up, to get us on the right path. And man, you know, if you don't take heed over time, like I said, uh, you have to be plucked out to create more room and, uh, I believe we get opportunities to come back uh, because we are our ancestors just in different bodies and we get opportunities to come back to try to get it right because this earth is a school for learning and teaching and just like the school you went to there are people there to learn and teach and if you're not doing anything if you're not teaching and you're supposed to be teaching the teachers get fired right get released if you're a student and you're not learning, what happens? You get suspended, you get kicked out because you're taking up space, taking up oxygen. You you serve no, no purpose. And I feel the same way with earth and with life. If you're not teaching or learning, creating, and you keep struggling with the same thing, man, you refuse to fight and, and take a hold of that thing. And you've done with the same thing, man, for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, sometimes you got to be plucked out and uh, come back and, and get it right or attempt to get it right. So, you know, um, I heard some of the DMX story on a, on a uh, Rough Riders special 
I wouldn't call it a documentary, but it was on BET and they did a special on the Rough Riders, the record label he was on. They did a special on their history, <clears throat> their beginnings, uh, their height, and uh, when they closed out, when the curtains closed on them. And DMX being their flagship artist, uh, they did it. They took a lot of footage on him. They uh, did a lot of research, interviewed a lot of people regarding DMX. And DMX stated, um, now don't quote me on this verbatim, but I believe he was around 11 or 12, where a big homie uh, gave him a joint or a blunt, but he didn't know, uh, DMX didn't know that it was laced. And I wanna say it was laced with crack. Uh, either crack or PCP, not sure. I want to say crack. And from there, man, he was he was hooked. It messed him up. And he got really emotional when telling that story. You can tell he was still dealing with that. And obviously, he's still dealing with that time right now. But, you know, before that incident, he was 11 or 12, before that, DMX already had issues. He already had family issues. There were all there was a, there were already abuse issues in his life. So I believe the drug was just a clutch, a clutch uh, to give him an excuse to mope, to live in his sorrows, because he had low self esteem before he even took the drugs. And man, you know we got to be careful. Uh, now that was unfortunate. And that was really wrong for the for uh, that, that older gentleman to do that to DMX. But man, we gotta be careful about using things as clutches and making excuses and wallowing in our sorrows. And I see throughout years I've seen DMX do that a lot. Just wallow in the sorrows about his mom, about his, his way he grew up. Man, you gotta get out of yourself. Now, as it may be how horrific or bad DMX grew up, someone had it worse than he did, I guarantee you. So you have to look at life with the half glass full, with the, with the glass half full, not half empty. You got to be uh, grateful about what you do have and not focus on what you didn't have. You know, none of us have a perfect life. I didn't have a perfect life. You know, I didn't have the perfect mom. I didn't grow up with a father. Man, I go on and on. I grew up in the hood. Uh, and I did some things. But I'm never going to mope and blame all my bad decisions on my environment or my mom or the lack of a father. I got to take responsibility. I got to be accountable and take strong hold, take a stronghold over that situation, over my life, over my decisions. You gotta be strong-minded. And you gotta step out of yourself. Don't just live for yourself. You gotta live for others. You gotta, you gotta wanna leave, leave this earth setting a good example. Setting a good mark, leaving a good mark on this earth. And uh, yeah, Dan Mix, talented brother, talented rapper. I think he's a talented actor, but it's a shame, man, if he does succumb, that he won't be remembered for those things. That won't be the highlight. We'll just remember how he died and his drug struggles, which he could have rewritten that story. He, the story could have been written as, this happened to me when I was 12. This happened to me before 12. I went through this. I fought it. I overcome it. Now. You can learn from me. I can tell you the process. I can show you the steps. So, um, as of right now, I don't think it's official that he's passed. Uh, you know, even uh, the former basketball, NBA basketball player, Lamar Odom, was brain dead or, or pro announced brain dead, pronounced brain dead. Um, and he overcame that. So, you know, um, and guys will be done, you know, if it's meant for DMX to 
uh, survive this physically, let it be done. If it's meant for him to cross over, then come back and try to, you know, do it right and let that be done too. Uh, so I'm impartial about it. I think we can learn from it. And uh, yeah, man, fight those strongholds, break those chains. All right, no excuses. Mind over matter. Peace.